The parts were delivered much quicker than I expected, so here it is. The finished Lego Ferris wheel called Big Wheel from the video game theme park. And I say it's finished, which for me means that it's in version 1, and in the future I'll make version 2, version 3 and so on as I find things to improve. But it is actually complete as it stands right here. This is a full presentation video, so I'm going to dive into the design choices and how this has been created. However, I'm not going to show you all of the technical details because those were covered in the video that I titled Designing an Automated Lego Ferris Wheel. And there's not really any changes on the mechanical side, so please watch that video if you're interested in the technic elements. For now, let's dive into the design choices and what has been done since that video. So what has happened to this module since you've seen it last time? Well, there's two really big changes. One is the coloring. So before it was very black and dark. Now I've changed it to yellow and white, just as it is in the video game. And I no longer have this multicolored tower to hold this side. Instead, I'm using this triangle setup with the uh, transparent lift arms because I find this to be fairly inconspicuous and I need this tower in order to hold up this side of the module, otherwise it would sag and drag and not work. Another strange change since last time is the flower here. It has seven petals and that is exactly as it is in the video game and it even turns with the wheel. I have changed the uh, forks, you can call them, that are holding the parts. They are fairly long here and with the short arms toward the middle. I would prefer if this part was longer and the forks were shorter. However, that would also make the ride less reliable because as you can see here, ah, let's get the uh, child out before we make too many dangerous moves. You can see it moves very closely to the middle of the fork. So we really need these long arms here. I might in the future make a more bulky design for these arms. They are quite thin now because I want to make them as light as possible. Most importantly, if I'm going to make a change to this module, it would be to change the parts so that they had some kind of door or mechanism in the front that would open up only when they're getting in and out and close when they are up here in the free because it is a bit dangerous to fall out. It doesn't happen when I'm running the module, but it doesn't look so good that these parts are open. And you saw with the plane flyer module that it is possible to make closing door. However, that is also extremely difficult. The base has also received a significant change since last time. I've added this almost egg looking base and that is uh, slowly curving, changing from black to white to yellow because that's how it is in the video game. Now in the video game, the middle part here is also completely filled out with this base, but you know, I need the mechanisms to get the people in and out. So that's why we have this big gap here in the middle. And the base is continuing all the way around. Although it's a bit difficult to make it all yellow here because I still need the Technic parts in order to have this part of the tower be extremely robust. There are three major improvements to the reliability of this module and they have all something to do with the software. So let's turn it on. So you saw it's no longer blinking, it no longer needs the manual calibration. And that's because it is always calibrating the light sensor. That also means that if I change the light conditions, I don't have to turn off the module and turn it on again in order to calibrate it. Another thing that has been improved is that if we have a lot of people trying to get into the module, let's try it like this. Then you will see, of course, there are more people trying to get into the pot, but there's only space for one. But when they have to get out again, the module will try to force them out by going a bit back and forth. And even if it sees people in front of the sensor, it will keep on trying to get people out before it starts running the wheel again. And that is very important because that means we don't get people who are trapped right here as it could be in the previous version. I've also changed it so that should there be any trouble at any point, then I can press the start button in order to kill everything. So you can see, 
even when it's running, I can always stop the module. I don't have to wait anymore. So these three changes, that is kill switch, continuously updating light sensor calibration, and the uh, more aggressive way of getting people out of this module means that I no longer have these issues that you saw in the previous video with people getting stuck inside of the module or the light sensor incorrectly seeing minifix when there are none. And that is it for this presentation video. If you enjoyed it, then I have plenty of other videos just like this in my back catalog, and they're also in the playlist that I'm linking here in the end screens. If you want to see the Java code for this module, it's in the description below. And building instructions will appear if I get 1,000 views on this video. And yeah, that's it. So take care, have fun, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video where I'm going to present the coffee shop that you also saw in the layout that I had here on the table.